Welcome to episode six of the Flight Brothers FT podcast, recorded on September, correction, that would be October. This was supposed to be the September 26th edition. However, we're recording it on 10-3. In this episode, bird dogging, beavers, and bowings. If you enjoyed this content, please click like and subscribe and ring the bell for all of our notifications. If you are new to our podcast format, welcome, and for our returning subscribers, welcome back. Are you interested in supporting the podcast or this YouTube channel? Maybe you produce flight simulation peripherals or software? If you have product information you would like to share with us or the flight sim community, please contact us at flightbrosft at gmail.com. To follow us on social media, go to facebook.com slash flightbrothersft and on Instagram and Twitter at flightft2019. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry guys, we're having a little fun out here. I typed something a little inappropriate while Tim was doing that. Again, that uh, Instagram and Twitter is at FlightFT2019. It's uh, late on a Saturday night, so you're going to get the best of us here today. Nothing nothing but the best. Nothing but the best. Yeah, it's, that's what our... Uh, it's gonna I guess be, it'd be... Li- it's going to be huge. Huge or huge? Was there a silent H? That was the, that was the Trump huge. Oh, okay, okay. Well, anyway, your uh, president and candidates aside, wherever you are in the world, welcome again to the episode six. Um, As usual, we're going to roll through our different segments, but we have added, um, obviously with our inclusion of Microsoft Flight Simulator more recently to the channel, we're going to include those product releases as well. So, um, Tim, two simulators, uh, twice the news. Well, sort of. Basically, so uh, so we're starting off today in X-Plane land with the Flight Factor 787, which is scheduled to be released in 2021. So uh, they've got an update over here on the xplane.org forum. It says, uh, Flight Factor, the next big thing, 787. So uh, at this point, Lee, it looks like we just have 3D modeling of the cockpit. Is uh, Is that what you're seeing here? Yep, that's that's what I'm seeing, and you know, there's. I have a high uh, high expectation of this product because, of course, you know, uh, you frequent viewers of the channel are aware that Tim and I have several Flight Factor products, so I would expect at least that standard, and th- the one that's currently available, the Magnite, hmm. it had it had a big update. I think our last podcast, but. Man, it, it seems like it still gets a lot of criticism. Since I don't have it, I'll withhold comment or judgment. But um, Well, Lee, have you watched a YouTube of the Magnite? I believe I've watched Captain Canada fly it. I think we watched that over at your place, right? Uh, very likely. Um, and yeah, I remember not being terribly impressed with it. But sure. uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to second Lee that if this is as good as the Flight Factor 757 or 767, then it's definitely going to be something we will want to have in our hangar. The nice thing on there, Tim, if you read that last line, rest assured our V2 plans for other models are simultaneously on the way. And I believe further down that comment thread, someone uh, kind of pointedly asks about the Trip 7. I was going to say that has to be the question. That has to be it. Yep, yeah. there it is. Hopefully, seven triple seven comes before this. Yeah. So um, uh, there I, you go. I will admit, if you were to release on the same day of new Flight Factor seven eighty seven and an updated trip seven, and I could only buy one, I would probably get the trip seven because I'm more interested. <laughs> well, and you know, with Flight Factor uh, again, that high expectation is probably gonna. You know, we're probably gonna be looking at the seventy. Five to ninety dollar price point. Mm, I am not expecting this to be a cheap, uh, cheap ride. No. Yeah, for sure. I mean, get what you pay for sometimes, right? No, uh, but it could be pretty, pretty uh, interesting aircraft. Um, we see one here in Phoenix. Uh, American Airline has rescheduled their. Is it Chicago? Are, are you? I think there? it's Chicago during the winter months. So we have a Chicago that comes in here to Phoenix, and uh, 
I can't remember if uh, Speedbird, uh, the British Airways, um, when they took offline the 747, did we get a Trip 7 or a... Uh, do they even own Dreamliners? Uh, yes. Actually, they have both. I think it was a Trip 7 for a while, and I've also seen the 7-8 at work. Nice, um, nice. You need to send me a picture of that, Lee. I, I feel tipped. I, I can't remember. I think I may have had a video at some point, but uh, anyway. All right. So um, well, one of the things I'm curious about, and, and I guess we'll see this in uh, Project Fly and Flight Sim Toolkit, is once this is released, uh, how are people going to use it? Because this is obviously an aircraft optimized for the ultra long haul, low density. And uh, for me, at least, I'm not crapping on anybody else's flights and plans. But for me, that's not something I have the time or interest to do. So um, I, I would not be flying out to uh, Australia. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Doing a Project Sunrise. I, I, I do not have time for that. No, thank you. Right, right. Yeah, well, um, it's it's going to be here. Uh, no hard date, right? It just said it's scheduled for a 2021 release. So yeah. you can anticipate two months from now or, uh, what, 14? No, I, didn't, half adds up. I didn't see any textures, so odds are we could be a while out. It, it'll be like that uh, CRJ from a podcast or two ago where they were asking when it was going to release and uh, didn't even have wings. You know, a, an interesting thing, uh, I bet everyone in the flight sim community – well, anyone who really looks a lot may have noticed there was a huge glut of sales over the summer. And I had told Lee my prognostication was they must have some inside knowledge or at least a really good suspicion that uh, Microsoft's new flight sim is about to drop. And they expected a relative devaluing of the uh, X-Plane products and they wanted to pump the market as much as possible so i wonder to what extent does flight factor have to uh consider that there's a slightly reduced market share now to uh flight sim well as we've seen there's still a lot of traffic obviously and i mean you and i for the last couple of days have been playing x-plane 11 uh, in our free time so mm -hmm. it's still there still relevant right still lives on it's certainly the more um from a procedural standpoint it's still the king of the hill at the moment. Sure, sure. Hopefully, uh, high quality add-ons will change that. But hey, man, let's move. Uh, let's move next on the product announcements. Here we've got oh, Delta this, Wing Sim. This what? Is, this is you, man. This is this is, oh. your, this is your wheelhouse. Yeah, uh, Delta Wing Simulations, who I'm unfamiliar with, is releasing a an F16 Block 52 Plus. If you uh, click on our links again, if you are new to our podcast. Many, if not all of the links uh, for this month, it'll be many of the links are included below. So feel free to go look at those on your own to see the pictures and uh, uh, web pages. But yeah, an F-16 and uh, looks like they actually have, if you're looking at them, Tim, see they, they have the CFTs on them, the uh, conformal fuel tanks. It, okay, is that what that is? I was just about to ask you, what yeah. on earth is, uh, it looks like shoulders... Mm -hmm. where the uh, wing box meets the uh, fuselage, and, and those are fuel tanks. Yeah, it's uh, really interesting. We had some of these uh, when I was stationed at Eglin. Uh, there were a few of them, and I think for the most part, we don't use them in the States, but I think some of the uh, international, some of our international uh, allies use them. All right. Now, but since that base was testing and development, we got to see them there. I know you've had the unique privilege of at least getting to uh, sit in an F-16, so you've you've got mm -hmm. me beat on that standpoint. Mm -hmm. I've uh, I've been about close enough. I I could have hit one with a rock if I threw it. That's about as uh, good of exposure as I've gotten to the F-16s. Sure. On the ground, at least. So beautiful bird, uh, and I know Lee's a, a huge fan of the 1980s classic Iron Eagle, which. Must be the most yeah. epic F-16 movie out there, right? Well, uh, like I, I joke with you, Tim, you know, um, for any of you movie buffs, of course, you'll you'll be well aware that the Air Force has terrible movies and pretty much everyone else has uh, better movies. <coughs> Top just, Gun. Just, 
Yeah, yeah, off the top, the Navy has Top Gun. You Danger really don't zone. need any more. Right, but they've got more. Um, the Army has pretty much anything from Band of Brothers to Saving Private Ryan, I'd say. Um, what's the Marines got? Well, they got Full Metal Jacket. And then the Air Force has Iron Eagle. So if I want to fast forward, I would actually say a better representation of the Air Force would be Transformers. Which is, <laughs> Eagle Eye was pretty terrible. What is it with them and Iron Eagle, Eagle Eye? Hmm. Anyway. Maybe Iron Eagle was so good, they just said, that's it. We, we can't stop this. We're done. <sighs> yeah. And then they, didn't they follow that up with like four or five sequels that were equally terrible? No, we, we don't talk about the sequels. <laughs> Those even, uh, even, even I agree the sequels were beyond watchable content. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if that uh, cassette player strapped to his knee would be considered fod. So that's, <laughs> that's foreign object damage or foreign object debris. Um Anyway, so <laughs> only if the engine gets it. All right. True, true. Um, all right, so there's an F-16 coming out. If that's your thing, Tim, I've always got this mixed thing with uh, with fighters. You know, I don't really, I don't really view flight simulation as that. But you know, I don't mind having them to go mess around a little bit. You know, I have the same problem. It's like, what would you say you do here? Like, uh, I'm going to fly a combat air patrol over my house, intercept some live traffic. Like, what What are you going to do with it? Yeah. Uh, because if you want to combat, there's obviously DCS and other options sure. out there which are optimized for it. So mm. I, I think really their, their place is for those of us who are well-versed in a sim like X-Plane. Sure. It's just a toy. You're going to take it out. You're going to say... You know, I flew this. And here's the other thing, and this is why I put zero stock in any of these fighters. Hmm. The actual performance data is usually classified. So unless it's a Vietnam or older fighter, the odds of it actually being simulated accurately are probably slim to none. Well, I mean, really, all that's got to be is impressive, right? To anyone who doesn't fly one, it just has to be impressive. Sure, 30, 40,000 feet climb performance, I don't know, mm -hmm. 270 degrees a second roll rate, whatever. You know, call, call it good, right? Yeah, I'll I mean, never know. It's, it's just a fun toy. Uh, I think the most fun I've ever had with a fighter was doing zoom climbs. So if you don't know what yeah, that yeah. is, go look up Chuck Yeager, zoom climbs. It's a good time. Sure. So uh, I see the next one is a little more more our speed here, Lee. We've got some. Uh, is this updates or a new aircraft? No, nope. these are product announcements, sir. That's what section of the podcast we are in. Let me remind you. So uh, that's that's how how clearly I read things. <laughs> it's in red text, guys. Um, but yeah, man, I I didn't know I wanted this. It's a, uh, I don't even know if we told the people what it is. So it's uh, Thranda is developing the DHC2 Beaver, and they're including that in a dynamic generation series. And uh, that is, actually, there's a link in the link that we're sending you guys. So uh, Are you, you trying to tell out. me you didn't know you wanted Beaver? Yes, that's what I'm saying. All right, uh, just, just, just verifying. All right, continue. Yeah, especially a beaver that's a tail dragger. So this obviously is that. Um, it looks good. All we're seeing really here is external photos, I think. Um, and I think there's a rumor that they're going to have floats for it as well. So if you're into the bush flying and uh, mountainous terrain and stuff, this is your guy. And, of course, uh, Thranda, I think I have... I know I have two of their aircraft, I believe, and then uh, possibly another one developed by them and it's also enjoyable so well i will tell you i hands down upon looking at this wanted it because unlike the f-16 this is a plane i have been in and um it was a super memorable flight actually here's the funny thing i, I feel like uh we, we were having this conversation not that long ago lee and i were talking about flight training and ga flights and i told lee something's interesting on commercial flights, they're kind of forgettable. 
but every GA flight I've ever been on, I remember vividly. So you've been in a beaver? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the aircraft just once. And uh, it was on floats up in Alaska. Fantastic trip through the fjords. Uh, I actually annoyed the crap out of everybody to get to fly in the co pilot seat. And uh, the pilot obviously knew I was just av geeking out up there and um, asked him a ton of questions. And uh, he had a good time. He, he flew us around like we were in his private minivan. I was asking him, like, what about this and what about that? And he's just bank us over, show me something, put us back on course. And so uh, I, I got the most out of our little, like, 20, 30-minute flight out to meet a uh, sightseeing boat to watch the whales. And, and by the way, I didn't see one darn whale on that trip. So the, the, the plane ride in the beaver, that was the highlight. Well, that probably would have been worth the price of admission anyway. Yeah, we could have just turned around to the beaver and I would have been happy. So. Sure, sure. Well, anyway, it does look nice. Um, again, this is an announcement, so I'm sure more information will follow. And that news is courtesy of um, Thranda on the xplane.org. Sweet. Well, I see we're moving into peripherals. Our our friends over at Honeycomb, who have put out the Alpha Yoke, which uh, Lee and I did a video testing testing one out. That was a loaner from a friend, mm -hmm. and the Bravo. Uh, actually, that's coming up later here, I believe. The Bravo throttles are nearing release. Right. And now I, I guess they've decided to stick with their uh, phonetic alphabet. We're getting Charlie's which is pedals that's right and if there's ever a person who needs to buy this lee it's you sir it's you it, it, yeah it is you you have your pedals and um i don't so it, there's no price on here um based on their current slash past pricing scheme i'm guessing these are probably going to be about 249 right isn't that what everything else is Right, um, it wouldn't surprise me. And looking at it, it, because I have the uh, CH Pros, and, mm -hmm. and so looking at this, it's got a little sexier appearance. It matches all the other honeycomb stuff. It's uh, black with red, but it has a little more. How would I put it? I mean, you've seen my my pedals, Lee. They look, they look like simulator pedals. Yeah, they put a little more aesthetic design i think this actually kind of reminds me of what was those black tie fighters in one of the later star wars movies you oh. know it's like a black tie fighter and it's got the red accent thing on it or something yeah um oh there's the regular tie fighters there's tie bombers there's um it was a tie fighter but what's his name he had the uh the black one right well, they're, um, but they're all black. But uh, I think once we got into them constantly re, uh, remaking the Star Wars, the, yeah. the newer ones started to have a little more accent colors, like the reds on it. And, and yeah, I sure. mean, I never thought of it, but that's like, yes, this looks, if you told someone that we stole these rudder pedals out of a TIE fighter, they look exactly like that. Sure, sure. I think you need to approach Honeycomb. With, with some imagery representing their uh, their products inside of a TIE fighter. I think that's perfect. That would be pretty sweet. Maybe we could build a simulator cockpit of a TIE fighter. And sell it to LucasArts. Actually, they'd probably sue us. They <laughs> Copyright own infringement. Right. They, they own our Disney now. The, but, uh, oh, right. They'll, they'll let us sell it, but there'll be a, you know, 70% markup. 98% of it. <laughs> <laughs> for Disney licensing. Yeah, so if you're like me and you don't have pedals and you do have a honeycomb, Alpha or uh, Bravo, uh, here's the matching furniture to go with it. Uh, okay, real quick, uh, just a thought on pedals, everybody. If you've never had pedals and you're still twisting your yoke and you're thinking to yourself, do I really need this? Is it really worth 100 bucks? I will tell you, once you've used it once... There's no turning back. You'll wonder how you ever lived without it. And if you ever do go and do some real flying, it will save you looking like a knucklehead like I did. Uh, Lee, did I tell you this after my first flight? 
Mm, I don't remember. Okay, everything went great. My instructor was awesome. He let me do everything. He uh, he just kind of hovered over the controls for a touch and go landing and uh, a stall. But when we got to the end of the runway, when we were finally done with our our discovery flight, I went to turn off the runway and I turned the dang yoke and I just felt like the biggest moron and he started laughing and I'm like ah and then I started using the rudder pedals. Which well, I will. If I could rain on that, the one problem I have with yours when I use them mm -hmm. is I don't have a sense of feedback. Mm. I can't tell because I, I don't have the muscle memory. I can't tell where center is, and I can't gauge my pressure. They're like the, no, that's on the a brakes. Good point. That's a good yeah, point. there's. It's like when you drive a car, especially a manual transmission, right? All of them have a different clutch take up and feel. Every car is like the brakes pedals are a little different. You know, some are, yeah. are mushier, some are firm. So it's kind of like that. No, that's a very good point because, you know, like going from a real car steering wheel, which has a lot of feedback, to mm -hmm. a game wheel where you might have some artificial feedback. You know, that's a, that's a very good analogy. I like it. Sure, sure. All right. Yeah, I, crank, I crank the crap up out of my steering wheel feedback on my stuff. <laughs> it's, it's kicking you. You're right. All right, yeah, well, he's a little bit of a motorhead if you didn't catch the last video on uh, F1 tracks of the uh, of the Americas. That's uh, Lee's other hobby. All right, so we're on to product releases, sir. What do we what do we have going on here? Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, we'll start with them. And uh, Carinado has released the Mooney M20R for that simulator. So Carinado's fast out of the box with two, right? They had the 180T, uh, 182T on launch day, and now we've already seen a Mooney out for them. And it looks hot. I, um, I would uh, honestly, uh, I haven't really given any thought to payware for uh, flight sim yet. But when I had seen, because I had heard about this prior to us talking about the podcast. And sure. I was like, ooh, a Mooney. Mm. And being Carinado, whatever the detractions may be, I at least knew it would be up to a quality standard that I could have fun with it. Right. Uh, you know, it might not be, oh, is it, is it study level? Because I own six Moonies or some nonsense like that. Uh, right, right. But, you know, I knew the textures would be great. It would look really hot. And uh, it would fly well enough that I could at least entertain myself so sure Good well stuff. and i think to a point that probably only matters to can i air quote hardcore simmers because if you've got a real mooney you don't want to be hassled with all the crap of actually operating one in a sim um and if you're a casual simmer you don't want the complexity of a study level aircraft most likely mm -hmm. so uh, i don't know <laughs> hey, well, we've we've seen a little feedback on what, what video was it for FS Elite uh, Meridian? Oh, okay. The oh. Carinado, right? Right. Asking about the Carinado formula and all that. Yeah, yeah. So Carinado is probably a known quantity. They're going to have a certain level uh, that I think, like you said, Tim, in that video, as a matter of fact, you know, take it or leave it. You know, if you like Carinado, you know what you're getting. If you don't. Well, then that's probably what you're getting also. Steer clear. Right, right. Yeah, so, no, uh, imagery on this, though, looks good. And uh, yep. if you're enjoying Microsoft Flight Sim and you enjoy Carinado, it, it's a shoe. -in. And one, one thing about Carinado that I kind of like, their prices are always very impulse buy level. Like this is, uh, this Mooney is... Twenty four ninety nine in British pounds, so that's probably uh, I don't know. I have no idea the exchange rate right now. Probably about thirty bucks. Yeah, I'd say probably thirty thirty five. Hey, and I think they, I think it's an intentional model that works really well because it's right there. If you get it on payday and you've got the itch, you'll spring thirty thirty five bucks on a plane, right? But kind of that forty fifty, you're like, yeah, that's forty or fifty bucks. Right, exactly, so, and the, yeah, and then you hit the high-end models at like seventy-five yeah. to hundred, and, and that's one of those like, 
you only buy it if it's your like dream boat aircraft and you're gonna fly the crap out of it yeah yeah you're gonna budget that gotta gotta take out payments <laughs> <laughs> right right is this a five year i think i can like, do a yeah. five year so one percent interest our next product release we have is also for microsoft flight simulator these links uh the past two links for the Mooney are at fselite.net so the black box simulation group releases a cessna l19 bird dog so if you want a lightweight small tail dragging cessna they've got you covered and this is probably going to work really really well in uh actually i see a picture with floats as well sorry i took a took a gravel road there but um yeah you know with all the vfr scenery and stuff that Microsoft Flight Simulator offers, this is probably a great, great aircraft for that. I can absolutely agree. I, I'll be honestly, I haven't taken out any of the jets. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the biggest thing I've flown on there was the uh, King Air. And I in no way feel like I'm getting ripped off by doing that because uh, from my mind, low and slow, that's, I mean, that's what the flight sim have is in droves the amazing trees the fantastic world level ortho sure. uh, i don't want to be at thirty thousand feet i want to be down there smelling it so right I'm, right i'm all about that this looks great mm -hmm. do you see a price on this thing um do, 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 do. oh i found it i found it sorry i beat you to it 24.99 so uh them and carinado Oh, yeah, right. This actually, I think originally when I was drafting this uh, podcast, I had it as a product announcement, but I think it released a day or two before or after. So actually, if we'd done the podcast on time and, and weren't late, it probably would have been an announcement. I blame COVID. Right. All right. And by sure. the way, th that price is in pounds, twenty four ninety nine uh, British pounds, because sure. that's that's what it is. All right. All right. I'm going to kind of skim this next section here. We have scenery airports um, on our list, guys, and I'm going to just kind of read these off. These are all from Microsoft Flight Simulator. So FSIM Studios has released the Kelowna International Airport. FS Dream Team has Key West. Orbex has released, what, what would you say that is, Tim? Alessand Vigra? I think it's Norwegian or maybe. I don't remember where that was, actually. I have to admit, at a glance, I saw Viagra. So I have no idea how you actually pronounce that. Sorry. If you live there and it's an awesome place, my apologies and my ignorance. Uh, where is that lead? Do you even have any clue? I've never heard of it. Uh, no, I, I think it was somewhere in the... Um, uh, what is it? Uh, Norway. Man, I, the name escapes me. Norway, Finland, that area of of europe i'll tell you what you fill in our listeners on the rest of these i'm gonna find out where you're googling uh, it okay where, where where she be sure uh flight beam and i blue yonder have released portland which is i think pdx portland international all right gaia simulations berlin tegel so that might be interesting uh it's tegel or teagle i would go with tegel I've been saying Teagle forever. All right. Yeah. Um, if, if you're listening out there to this podcast and you know, throw it in the comments. Cause, uh, well, it's not Beer Lynn, right? So kind of a short E, but if you have a vowel, I think, next to each other, like mm -hmm. an E and an I, the last vowel you pronounce like a long. If I remember that from German when I took that. So, uh, I took Spanish, sir. Sorry. Perfect. Well, good thing we're in Arizona because uh, you use that more than I would use German here. Yeah, I, I can order you. Uh, I can order you lunch. <laughs> right, right. And finally, uh, Pilot Plus from um, releasing London. Uh, I'm sure that's Wickham. And I'm going to say, as usual, we suggest adding FS Elite to your browser favorites to check out the latest flight sim news and releases. To be quite honest, guys, the market of Microsoft Flight Simulator is expanding so rapidly that uh, it's hard to keep track of all the new releases and all the companies that are providing, especially airports and scenery for it. 
And um, so go check out FS Elite and stay up on the latest and greatest news there. There's more releases actually than what I've included here, but this is kind of, you know, without beating the same thing, there's there's literally so many that I didn't want to eat up a lot of our right. time and your time going over it. Uh, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to secondly on that opinion since we get uh, the news flashes from SFS Elite since we're on staff, but we do videos so we don't we don't have to be troubled with these things. But we still get them, and it's obvious that uh, all the developers are very quickly trying to get on to uh, Microsoft Flight Sim. And so if you really want to have some awareness of what's going on but don't want to trouble yourself searching out the information, just subscribe to FS Elite because uh, there's a whole team of guys reading the news, putting out the articles, evaluating the stuff for you. So uh, they're yep. going to do the hard legwork for you. And for me, because I'm not going to, I don't have the interest to deal with all that. Well, and they're global, so it they almost never sleep. There's almost always somebody up somewhere, so. Um, Absolutely, I think, yeah. I think the UK and the, the States are probably the two biggest regions. Mm-hmm. Um, Australia. I think Shane, yeah. Shane's kind of got to leave, right? But he was from, uh, he was Australian, I think, out there. So, anyway, yeah. Um, never sleeps hey I, I answered our airport question though oh yeah yeah what'd you get uh still don't entirely know how to say it but i'll assume the aircraft is in vigra vigra would be the place i guess and okay. it's in norway it's i coast. think i said that right did coast i say that norway. uh well if you did i didn't catch it but that wouldn't surprise me that i didn't catch it but uh, that yeah. doesn't surprise me that you wouldn't have listened either so there you go yeah, I, I kind of half listen. My wife's used to it by now. You can deal with it too. <laughs> sure, fair enough. And uh, also, in a slight change, of course, I included this. It's an FSX P3D release. DC Designs releasing a Concord, and of course, you know, Tim, that's included because Concord. I just heard the Back to the Future theme in my head. <laughs> FSX P3D. Yep. All right. Well, uh, Concord. Okay, I, I'm clicking. I, I I just need to look because we have the Colimata, and so I just sure, kind of want to sure. see how how does it how does it stack up. I mean, it looks it looks pretty good. I think. I mean, some of the where you're looking at the flight engineers panel. I think that's one of the coolest views because you kind of get the 3d of the switches and it looks very nice so if you're a p3d and uh fsx user this might be your bird yeah i mean it's not bad i feel like the colimata's textures at a glance are probably a little better on the externals uh the cockpit on this is pretty smoking hot they they did a darn good job um Sure, sure. Granted, these are the money shots, so like actually operating it, um, right? And I, I think the Colimata one now that they've got the uh, flight engineers panel on on board is pretty smoking hot. One of these days, I need to fly that. Sure, yeah, uh, you, you and me both. This is also released on Just Flight Store for twenty seven ninety nine pounds. So if uh, everything's in con- pounds today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, Callum and those crazy Brits over there that Callum. run this site. You can't help where you're born, right? No, just kidding. So, um, anyway, that, that wraps up uh, product releases. Right. We're on to news. The news. Hey, can I, can I add something to our list? Because sure. it just came in on the Twitter. Uh, All right. a, a popular flight sim and real world pilot YouTuber Flight Deck to Sim has just tweeted that he says words cannot even begin to describe what we achieved on yesterday's inaugural charity stream flying the Kolimata Concorde that's like I want to kind of hit this now uh, he says sure. we smashed our 500 pound because we're still on pounds aren't we target and as of right the second he has raised Three thousand seven hundred ninety-nine pounds and forty-eight. I don't know. Is it cents or pence or? I, know, I think it's pence. Uh, taking gift aid into account. Isn't that fantastic? So, uh, hats off to Flight Deck to Sim. Um, 
we, we love his content and sure. it's it's nice to see the community pulling together i'm i i saw earlier in the day he was doing a charity thing mm-hmm. but shame on me it's been a long it's been a long year my goodness and a long day and a sure. long week and i cannot recall what the charity was but uh yeah yeah good job flight deck to sim all right back to the scheduled news right right well since we're in uh october now this is actually about a month late xplane.org had their labor day sale so there was things to buy there um hopefully you cashed in if not i think it was only for the weekend i think it was only a three or four day Hmm. sale had some steep discounts on some stuff though did you get anything no I i got one i got my v flight air grumming tiger I wish I had had my head a little more screwed on. I there's there's some things I might like to pick up, but uh, I need them like I need a hole in the head. I still have a truckload of aircraft I picked up just prior to, uh, as I mentioned, Flight Sims release. There were so many good sales. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I just still need to play with half of those and make some videos. Yeah, yeah. You bought three or four, right? Um, like a day. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough tim splurged Shh, don't tell my wife all right 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 uh in additional news the first round of pre-ordering is done with a second round likely uh, speaking of honeycomb this is for the bravo throttle quadrant uh tim and i have been looking forward to this for quite some time and um did they stick with their target? I think it was going to be about two forty nine. Also, right? Do you know if the price stayed that for the pre orders? You know, I didn't see any talk of it, but I didn't really investigate it. I knew I knew we were coming up on it, and uh, yep. you know, Got it doesn't it. it doesn't look that different? I mean, this nope. is the only thing I'm seeing here in the promo that I don't recall seeing in the early shots is the uh the painted on indicator lines yeah yeah click on that uh click on that link down there for the product page and you get a slightly uh, more exploded view of it yeah i mean it, it looks gorgeous um i don't want to speak for lee but uh for, for my money i'm way more interested in the throttle than i am in the yoke yeah, I want this. I want this really bad. Uh, the only thing is, I want this in a time machine, because uh, if if I never mentioned this before, prior to this channel, Lee and I were doing a lot of a virtual airline, and when it shut down, that's where Lee had this crazy idea we should do a YouTube channel. But uh, for a year solid, I flew the Zebo. Uh, what was I getting in, man? Like three to five flights a week. Yeah, I know you racked up four or five hundred hours in that one year that we flew for him. And then I had a second child, and now I rack up about four to five hours per a month. month. <laughs> that's, that's about right. I think you've flown more in the last two days than you have probably all uh, month of September, right? Oh, it hurts. It hurts. But it, it's all right. Children are awesome, and... Oh. <laughs> and you, you know, and you can't put them back. The, the the time window on that is is limited. So um true. But flying the Zebo, man. A set of throttles that I could have adjusted and had the flaps. I mean, I I think for people who have a thing and that's what they mm-hmm. do this is this is the product you want because you're going to set it up and it's that's going to be your ship and you're going to know it and you're going to feel it and you're going to reach over and you can muscle memory it it's going to be perfect and, and that's why I want to go to work machine. yeah life's going to suck you're going to spend all day dreaming about getting home and wrapping your your fingers around that hot sexy honeycomb and throttling up your bird <laughs> i was going to say you're going to go to work and go yeah i can fly 737 it's mm-hmm. no big deal ain't nothing but a thing right right well moving on I, I think we're recording for about 39 minutes Tim and we're it's alright we're mm-hmm. having a good time sir we're having a good time <coughs> excuse me that's two months in a row I've coughed on air so I probably won't edit that out must be the COVID it must be the COVID 
Right, um, INI simulations, uh, of course, having the A300-600, which we reviewed. On uh, FS Elite. On FS Elite, correct. Um, they have released a VR-ready profile. So if you are a VR owner and you have the on-the-line A300-600, <laughs> you can go get a VR profile over there. And I think, I think it was free for the download profile. That would make sense. Um, sure. Well, it, it, that's such I a good think... cockpit. I bet in VR, oh, that'd be hot. No, that's that's a wonderful plane. If you are an Airbus fan at all, and uh, you've got the extra, uh, you know, seventy to eighty bucks, whatever the equivalent um, currency rate is, you can't go wrong with that. Or if you're a 757 fan, as, as our listeners yeah. may know, Lee and I, oh, we're straight up Boeing dudes. This was like Airbus, what? McDo? And uh, we got a little bit of help to program the McDo, but this thing is cool. It's just like the, the, the early 757, a, a sweet mix of you've got an FMC, but a lot of steam gauges, a lot of cool buttons to push. It's not so automated. You feel like I'm on my computer programming a computer to fly right. a plane. That's that's dumb. While I watch. <laughs> we see that on the forums all the time. People put, what do you guys do during cruise? And all the GA guys are like, I don't. I actually fly the plane. Yeah. Well, and then you got the other guys just talking about how do you program auto land. It's like, so pretty much you taxied. And you pressed go on the throttles, and then a thousand feet later, you were done for a couple hours. Get used to this, guys. I, I have we ever done a podcast and not ragged on Auto Land? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we mean it with the best of intentions. It's like we we know people do it. I mean, I've done I think two Auto Lands this year. One of them was for the which one was that? The SSG. I think when we did the V two point two. All right. Yeah. Yep. 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 I think I did an auto land on that just to test it. But uh, yeah, I've done one or two this year, and now we're in the tenth month. So I uh, I do not believe I've ever performed an auto land. I had that video of not doing an auto land on um, that the the Zebo where I was doing the mode control panel video. Oh right. And I left it locked on to the ILS, so when we pass the glide slope, you actually see it nose into the ground and crash. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> I mean, that was the intention, right? Like, you know, I was just like, I'm going to see what happens here. <laughs> Experimentation. Curiosity killed the cat, sir. And That's Lee. true. And to all of our listeners, you don't have to uh, replicate that. I've done it for you. All the hard work. There you go. <laughs> updates, Tim. Updates. Of course, this is our section for updates. All right. At least saying that as though I wouldn't read it and pretend like I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see the first thing here, uh, which I, I dipped my toe into before Lee, is X-Plane 11's 11.50 uh, 11 Vulcan Metal Update, the long-awaited one. So, yeah. uh, for, for me, it's been a dream boat. I've had a couple random crash to desktops, but generally speaking, it has been working and I'm pulling consistently 60, uh, FPS, whereas I used to be more in the, uh, on a light load 50 and on something that would bog it down, we'd get down to 20, a stable 20, not like emergency it's dying and looks stuttery 20 but regardless it, it, it's freaking gorgeous right now it's so smooth so what's your uh what's your experience been with the new update lee uh honestly i don't know i flew the tiger back from catalina island to uh to phoenix here which was about a three-hour flight and i think that's the first one that i did post 11.5 Tell, tell Darren to go away. I think I just uh, heard the cat. Uh, that's my cat. It's hungry. <laughs> it's on a diet. So, it's fat. Right, right. So um, that and then I did the couple air hauler flights today. So 
I did see with the Tiger, I mean, it was kind of over ocean, but I think it was like pulling 80, 82, 83 frames with light cloud. I'm jealous, so, man. I've, I've never seen those numbers. <laughs> well, I, I don't, to be fair, I don't have anything to compare it to because I didn't have that aircraft and I didn't really fly it and I didn't really, I, I'm not one of those frame guys where I look, like I don't fixate on that thing. That's not going to make or break my experience. Mm -hmm. So... It either is choppy or it's good enough. Well, here's my thought. Um, it, 20 is survivable, but I think 30 frames is about the point at which it, it's refreshing quick enough that you really have a hard time detecting it. And especially for our VR flyers, that's a big, yeah. big freaking deal. Uh, I particularly, I have no interest in VR because I tend to get nauseous when using VR equipment. So the last thing I want is to start thinking, hey, let's go flight sim and start feeling sick. Uh, so, but if it didn't make me nauseous, it's a freaking cool experience. I, uh, you know, that's great. So I, I think for those folks, that would just be awesome to have that much performance and uh, it's just so darn smooth. Now, I, I have one random question for you, Lee. On our Instagram, we posted your tiger landing at uh, Coronado? What, Catalina. Was, Catalina. Catalina Island. Yeah, K-A-V-X. Now, was that already in Vulcan or not? No, that one was not. That was not. Okay, because you kind of... I felt that landing when I watched it. I felt it in my pants. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. That's the uh, one, two, three. That's the fourth landing that I've done in that aircraft. And Catalina, the runway from, I can't remember the number now. I think that was going west, so like a two six, two seven, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it looked west. Um, yeah. Right, yeah. So the runway slopes up. So I already, I haven't gauged the, the right height to flare, the right sight picture. So I've banged it on, like, uh, I'll go into the flare, hold it, and then the ground's not there. And then so I'll release a little pressure, which you're not supposed to do, and then that's when it bites you. Yeah, it was it was funny, because, uh, and again, our Instagram is at FlightFT2019. Mm -hmm. But... Um, it looked so good. It was so stable. I'm just enjoying the aircraft. And then all of a sudden I see that touchdown. Just bam. I'm like, ooh, 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 ouch. ouch. Yeah, that was all hand flown. But I was trying to land it like most Grumman's, you know, on an aircraft carrier. So I figured the name it was built for it. There you go. <laughs> Danger zone. Right. There you go. Time number two. Don't all quit right. your day job. Yeah. All right. Well, what uh, what else do we want to hit? I know we're we're definitely chewing up time because we got two sims to talk about these days. Yeah, yeah. Um, Microsoft Flight Simulator has released their Japan update. We have a trailer at the bottom um, in the video description. So I have not performed this update, and I saw some issues regarding this update uh, performance issues. So. I can't speak to whether or not that was everything, but there seemed to be quite a few people on the Microsoft Flight Simulator, what is it, Tim, Asobo Studios Facebook group? Right. The one I saw was like, uh, the like large downtown buildings look better, but everything else looks like crap now, or that was the, that was the complaint I had seen, but I, I haven't downloaded it. I can't verify that, so. Yeah, and I think it's pretty hefty, several gigs. So if you are a uh, flight simulator owner, that update is out there for you. Also, right. coming back to the INI build, sorry, were you going to go with something? There? I was just going to say I believe it's uh, over 6 gig. 6 gig? Okay. 6 plus, like 6.5. Well, there you go. So uh, allocate appropriate bandwidth. Tell your kids to get off YouTube. And hard drive. <laughs> and hard drive, right. For uh, X-Plane, the INI I builds A300 uh, version 1.04 was released. You can go to INIBuilds.com for your account there, or sorry, store.INIBuilds.com slash account to get that update. I downloaded it today, actually, and installed it, but haven't flown it. 
I'm doing it uh, like as you say it. <laughs> uh, there you go. There you go. And of course, we mentioned X Plane 1150 is released as final. So if you don't have on auto updates, I think, right? You can choose to install it. Mine was pretty quick. How about yours, Tim? I think it took me probably, you know, 10 to 15 minutes to get everything downloaded and installed. On this X Plane update? Mm. Yeah. You know, I, it's one of those I walked in, I saw there was an update, and I just clicked do it and left the room, so I have no idea. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Coming back again to X Plane, and we kind of mentioned this regarding that flight factor, but the Magnite 787 9 has been updated to version 1.6. So they have. Uh, what they're calling a new cockpit. So you've got high res textures textures and PBR throughout your next gen electronic flight bag and an extensive list of bug fixes and other features. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at that list. Um, certainly the knowledge that flight factor is coming is gonna light a little fire there. I'm kind of glad I don't have the Magnite because I have a feeling that if I had it, I'd probably go buy the Flight Factor. Yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be interesting. But hey, that that there is capitalism, and uh, you know, there's winners and losers. But as the consumer, you're always the winner. So, that's good. Good stuff. Yep, and the Thranda Kodiak V2.2, which I also have. Love that aircraft. Love it more than I thought. Um, they've come out with 2.2 as a free update. So you can download that, of course, from the store that you purchased or, or via the Skunk Crafts Updater plugin. So that is going to work with the X-Plane 11.5 update. So you're going to uh, gain some of the additional features that that provides. It's a question for you. Are those um, FedEx feeder liners, are those Kodiaks or are they Cessna caravans? Yeah, they're caravans. They're caravans, okay. They, yeah. They're just so similar and, in appearance. Yeah, Empire is their call sign or their subcontractor, but they're FedEx feeders. All right, I, I just landed beside, uh, parked beside one in the, the Caribbean yesterday and my, my son was asking about it, so. Sure, sure. He wanted to know if it was a Pilatus. I had to, I had to refrain from child abuse. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't even look alike. Yeah, well, at least it's the it's the same turbo prop. He had one thing going for him there. So that's true. He was in the right category. Torque sim owners, we've got a couple updates for you. If you have the BN two Islander. 1.1.2 has come out as well as Cirrus owners SR22 1.1 Tim I'm super pumped because I was a release day owner I believe of the mm -hmm. SR22 and was disappointed because you had to use that experimental flight model and the beta which I didn't do so now that 1150 came out in the full release I have been able to update and actually flew my SR22 I think it was yesterday and didn't you have some issues with the AP in the uh, original release? Yeah, the multifunction display and the autopilot wouldn't function unless you had the, excuse me, the beta release. Okay, so that solved that. All right. Yeah. Well, the next one is one I can cash in on. Uh, we've got an update to the XCraft ERJ family to version 1-3-22. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lee and I got to do some release footage on those when they came out and yeah. uh they, they were they were solid even when they launched but they've been keeping up with it so uh you know that's one that like i always forget about them and then when i see it in like an update or something i'm like ah those are so much fun i need to take one out and actually if i can plug um uh, steve and marco over there I don't know if the website is new or not, but they have, I signed us up for it, Tim, at the Flight Brothers email. They have a newsletter or, or blog type thing that they're gonna be doing. So you can go over there to um, XCraft's 
I don't remember if it's xcrafts.com or what, and sign up for uh, getting their news releases. And of course, they have the other products too. Fantastic. Good stuff. All right. Well, it's nice that they're expanding their reach to keep you informed and let you know what's going on. Mm hmm. So, Lee, it looks like we've actually made it to the end of the news and we're, we're reaching our uh, kind of chitty chat section which i know we've been uh we've been working that in pretty economically anyway <laughs> sure sure well let's just run with it right so uh it, it, so yeah what what videos uh what's in the pipe on your end what's what have you released lately well the microsoft flight simulator video what was it the circuits of the world uh formula one the americas mm -hmm. released on september 27th we've had some positive feedback on that so, of course, as Tim mentioned, I'm a bit of a motorhead. I'm a uh, motorsports enthusiast as well. So I recorded um, basically directions how to take off from the airport you would likely land at if you are attending this Formula One race. And then I give you some waypoint instructions of how to navigate there uh, recorded in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I got to be honest. I mean, I'm not a race person at all. I don't know anything about it. But uh, when I was watching just for us, kind of a proofread for for Lee, I was actually pretty taken with it. Like, I was pretty interested. I kind of wanted to see some of these races now, having seen the tracks from the air. So it was uh, it was a good one. I, I really enjoyed it. And also included in that video link, there were, were a couple. Uh, races that had some experiences or stories that kind of went with them so i tried finding on youtube the necessary links for those and including them down there as well as i think a hot lap on each circuit so if you wonder as we fly over what that circuit looks like from the race car driver's perspective you can click on those links and they'll take you for a hot lap on there from the onboard camera so i was just trying to mix a little of everything uh, I think you should take the F-16 and try and fly the track. Do you think you make those turns? Nope. <laughs> well, not out corner an F-1 car, sir. All right. Uh, well, fr friction versus uh, aerodynamics. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, the car has the advantage of both. Mm. The, uh, the jet really doesn't have mechanical um, mechanical grip, as it were but the car can utilize both mechanical and aerodynamic grip, so it wins. Fantastic, fantastic. Also scheduled for later October, uh, don't know when we may shift this, is the virtual airline repositioning flight that we have previously recorded in Air Hauler 2, speaking is, of which. Is that repositioning a plane I left in the middle of nowhere? Is that what that is? It is. <laughs> Cause that's, that's exactly what I, it is. I just want you to know, Lee, I'm slowly hopping a Cirrus jet, and it's it's almost into Florida now, so somebody's going to need to put that back at some point. <laughs> it yeah, might you, be me. It might not. I don't know. You're going to need to pay us for that. Speaking of which, let's bring this up a little bit. Uh, we had fellow content creator, uh, I think he goes by Bug Eater 64 but his channel's Bug Eater Simpson. He has... Uh, applied and been accepted to the flight brothers ft virtual airline on air hauler 2 so he's done a couple flights on his youtube channel with us and i and i i say this not to tease him just because it makes for the greatest of stories he did crash our baron like the first time he took it out <laughs> oh that's right well i crashed the c90 or <laughs> tore it up Right, well, I crashed our Baron once, too. Uh, I flipped it over, but uh, it's it just... It's a bicycle. It was just it was just priceless for, like, a first trip. He's, like, in the chat thing, like, uh, how do I buy us a new Baron? I kind of screwed it up. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so we uh, released... Or I, I released, on our behalf, an Air Hauler 2 virtual airline setup video. Um, if you're not into... Air Hauler 2 and you have no idea, go check it out. Lee did a basic video on like what is Air Hauler 2 and if you've ever watched uh, what is that? Uh, Ice Pilots? Yeah. With the McBrien's up there. In, yep. um Gosh, what's the name of that airport? 
uh, yellow knife. Yellow and then knife. I wanted then to say the, cold bay, and I'm like, that's not it. It's yellow knife. Okay, thank you. Well, and then there's flying wild Alaska, which I think was actually a couple years before mm -hmm. that one. So if you're into either of those shows, and you like flight sim, oh man, you're gonna love air hauler because you're just you're running your own little airlines. So you can do passenger, but I do exclusively cargo, and. Uh, did that for probably a month to two months before I was finally like, okay, let's figure out this VA. And so that's what this video is, and me just showing how you set up the VA. And man, it was easy. And uh, well, it's it's been a good time. Lee's got some flights. I've got some flights. Our 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 new guy Bug Eater Simpsons got some flights in, and we're slowly making money. Yeah, and uh, feel free to come join our our VA because you know we'll accept anyone and actually speaking of which I've got to give a shout out to Duncan you know Slopey over there he was the creator of Air Hauler and um, we had an issue he resolved it for me we, we've been in communication via email and Tim got the patch updated I, I put the patch in it works so we have emailed him back saying yeah it looks like this fixed our issue so that should be coming out in a future just flight um, update so I did follow up and send him another one but <laughs> right and, and I think that's fantastic customer service that like you contacted him he wrote a product patch for you yep. and emailed it to you I mean it, it doesn't get any better than that so uh, that, that was good stuff right there and then now everybody will benefit from it because we have been able to uh, to verify in both Lee's system and mine that the patch does resolve the issue yep sure good stuff all right well what uh what else do we have here sir um i'm trying to look at my little hyperlink here because i don't remember it's from flying magazine because you know if you guys have listened to any of our videos or or sorry podcasts or live streams we've probably mentioned uh flying magazine which i love i think it's fantastic but there is, actually, I guess I'll just say there's a link below. You can go check out stuff there for, um, if you are a real world pilot in training, there's different apps you can go through, whether it's uh, King Schools or Sporties. Uh, there's some training apps that for test prep, learning your regulations, etc. Of course, for our international viewers, this would largely be um, for the FAA uh, American type uh, training. All right, so there's a lot of the uh, ground school materials. Yeah, yeah, that that kind of stuff, some theory and, and all that. So we'll include that link below, so you can go check it out if you are in the market or if you're just curious what the real world pilots are are using. Um, Do you know they actually talk about X plane in that article? That's maybe that's why I put it in there. Run with that one, Tim. Um. Well, they're just talking about um, X-Plane and its mobile version being a legitimate way for pilots to continue using their skills when they're grounded or, you know, time, weather doesn't permit. You can still go out and shoot an ILS approach or practice procedures that you didn't necessarily have time or the circumstances to uh, keep fresh with. Yeah, there you go. Maybe that's why I put it there. Who knows? Good stuff. Do you want to uh, take this last one? I think uh, we're right. We're just a little over. We try and keep these at an hour. Yeah, uh, sure. This this was a this was a surprising one for me. So I have uh, occasionally mentioned to Lee that while I'm impressed with Microsoft Flight Simulator, I'm not like, oh, I'm never going back to X-Plane. Not at all, actually. I'm still flying X-Plane more than uh, Flight Simulator. But I recently booted up uh, Flight Sim and went out near the town I grew up in. Uh, and it's a place I haven't been in about 15 years. And I flew from a local airport up towards my hometown and I, I told Lee, I said, I had a moment, a literal emotional 
moment and uh, being guys this is not something we usually talk about or articulate but like I, I was actually stunned at just how much the scenery like even though I had never flown over the area I'd always been driving out there I was not a pilot or anything so I could recognize it like the terrain was so accurate I could immediately recognize all these places and uh, it kind of took me back and I wasn't really prepared for it and so I was just telling Lee how remarkable is it that flight sims representation of the world is so accurate that I, I literally had this super emotional response to flying over my hometown virtually um, really it was it was it was astounding I uh, still blown away by it I obviously can't articulate it very well but if you've uh, if you've not already tried something like that and you have the new flight sim go someplace memorable to you and and just uh just check it out it's quite quite an experience they've they've got something really incredible with their scenery going on and i would uh i would never diminish how remarkable the scenery visual aspect is on the new flight sim yeah after having that discussion you uh I have not yet done it, but I'm looking forward to doing that kind of going through my old stomping ground, you know, the I haven't even flown over like the house I grew up in and that whole area, you know, where where me and the guys used to hang out at and so I'm looking forward to that when I when I'm able to get some time. <laughs> Just prepare yourself cuz I meant it to be like a short hop and uh I ended up like going to numerous of my old haunts because I just like couldn't stop but uh, nice it was uh, good times good times well the Avgas is cheap in sim so there you go yeah I, I told him to send you the bill that's uh, I hope you don't mind perfect <laughs> <laughs> I'll just throw it with the rest of the bills charge it to the flight brothers <laughs> right right in our non-existent account All right. well what do you think Tim should we should we wrap it up there I think that's it. It's been uh, a busy month in the flight sim world. Obviously, uh, Microsoft Flight Sim has made everything new again, so you can expect another uh, another couple months of endless airport releases and aircraft trickling out there as the developers get them online and updates coming in and patches and uh, all the all the growing pains of a new sim. So good stuff. Good times. All right, so I think for now, as we say, we're out of time, even though uh, we never really run out of things to talk about. So thank you for joining us. This was Podcast 6, and we'll see you in a, approximately a month for Podcast <laughs> number 7. So uh, I'm Tim. And I'm Lee. So until next time, remember, plan the flight. And fly the plan.